Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Electromechanica Lovato Energy Metering and Power Metering Solutions. My name is Clayton Forsler. Uh, Offer if you can just go to the next slide for us. I will be your co host today. Um, we also welcome our technical expert, Offer Soka, who is also our technical manager. Um, can I please ask? that you get your 2020 EM catalog on hand or download the uh, digital catalog at our website. Um, we've freezed your, your um, microphones and your, your video uh, so we can reduce any chances of failures or freezes. Um, please, for general discussions, please make use of the chat function in our toolbar at the bottom. Uh, if you wish to ask any verbal questions please raise your hand and we will unmute you so you can quickly ask your question um, then please direct all presentation related questions to our q and a function also at the bottom of the toolbar um, this live webinar presentation will be sent to everybody um, on the registered email addresses within an estimate of 48 hours then at the end of this webinar Please assist us by completing our poll. Um, and this poll will improve the overall experience that you've encountered with our presentation or our webinar. So please, guys, um, we're going to give the floor to Offer. Offer, thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Clayton. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to, to our energy management uh, webinar. Uh, with product focus around the Lovato metering solutions. Um, so what we'll go through through the first session is a, a brief introduction to what is energy management, components that will form part of, of an energy management uh, solution, uh, overview of, of what is an, a power meter and the application thereof, and uh, selections of CTs. Uh, post that first session, we'll have a quick five minute break, and then we'll continue to more on a product focus around the, the water devices. Okay. Uh, any questions? Uh, we'll have some brief pauses between, between the sessions. Um, feel free to, to post your questions. Uh, and let's see what we can answer, else we'll, we'll revert back via mail on anything that's, that, that we cannot cover. All right, so first of all, before, before we go down into products, is, is, is what is energy management? Um, so it's been around obviously for a while and everyone has different, different maybe perceptions of it, but in short, it can be defined as in different forms and processes. Commonly, it would be installations of new, more effective technologies to perform energy management or energy reductions. And secondly, is maintenance and operation of existing equipment to improve the function, the energy. Um, so quite importantly, since we can't manage what we don't understand, it is important for facility or site managers to learn or understand how the energy behaves on their sites how it can be most effectively used and how energy efficient technologies can be can benefit their operations all right so so before before you even start on your your journey of energy management uh, in order to manage your energy costs you will need to understand where you are your present usage and what influences and then what opportunities there are to reduce that present usage so a brief view of what I, or steps to viewing an energy management system or plan would be. Uh, some of these would obviously not involve a cost. It's just uh, auditing of data. So your first step would be obviously understand your energy cost. So what is your current bill consisting of? Um, readily available typically from your, your utility provider or your landlord. Uh, hopefully it's got some sort of data on to provide some sort of profiling and and you will then see okay that, that there's where I am that is what I'm spending 
then your next step would be is to try and do a month-to-month -month comparison year on year, um, winter versus summer, see where where you where you peak, where you decrease, and you build this very basic profile of of, of where you are month to month, year to year. Then the next more important steps of that, and these would normally involve some sort of systems in place, is understand when energy is being used. So profiling of the total site load and uses, okay? So we've got a little example uh, on the side here. Um, all right, on, on Thursday the 18th, I had a spike at a particular time. What happened there? What contributed to that? Um, and that is where we go to step four is profiling of these internal usages or systems and how they contributed to that spike. It may have been one specific machine, one specific load that caused that. But if you don't have something measuring that, you will not know what it was, all right? Then matching usage requirements. Match what, what you use to what you actually need. Um, meaning, can I schedule that activity to an earlier part of the day to flatten that curve? Um, do I need it to be running all the time and so forth? Um, then maximize those efficiencies. Are the systems operating effectively as possible? Um, imagine a HVAC system, which is not calibrated correctly, running 24 seven, even though the building is not occupied. You may not know that until you see a profile, which you've defined in steps four and five, all right? Once you've defined these different loads or consumers, then look at optimizing the, the, the energy supply itself. So the source. So sources are defined as the power generation. So be it your utility. And then the other point of energy is the actual power quality. Typically, quality of supply is defined by the supplier. Uh, so utility, utility gives you uh, the volts, but the quality is normally defined internally and contributors within your, your site normally affect the quality of, of your power, okay? So quality, internal quality of supply is fed from utility, all right? So, so what are benefits of energy management? Uh, obviously, savings to your bottom line. Uh, important note is energy is not a fixed ex expense. It will fluctuate from month to month. So it's to understand at which points you can have most benefits. And those benefits will result in savings. Uh, your processes would be more efficient. Uh, due to understanding, you'll be able to tune and optimize uh, the systems. So they will last longer, work better, um, become a reputation for becoming an energy efficient brand, uh, something that you publicize to the market. And then for your employees, an energy efficient workplace um, where it's safer, more pleasant, uh, correctly managed temperature as an example, uh, oxygen levels and so forth. All right. Now, as energy management is the concept, um, but what does the energy management system consist of? So typically it would be a combination of measurement equipment, which could be uh, meters in our case, and that's what we will focus on today. Uh, it could be other field controllers, gensets, power factor, changeover panels, and so forth, each which contribute to the energy of the site or management of the energy. Um, and then, with all this, this wonderful hardware in the back end, we obviously need to display it somewhere. Um, else we'd all be running around with little clipboards trying to write down uh, information and try and make sense of it. So the second component would be software for displaying the data. All right. So hardware on one side and software on the other. So this leads me to, to the offer we have available from Lovato which is uh, Synergy. So what is Synergy? 
It is a supervision and control software for electrical product or electrical parameters and environmental and process parameters. So trending of electrical information and logging it or trending of a process and logging it, all right? Beyond just providing data and tables and graphics, obviously there are other functions within this energy management system, which are uh, alarming, report generation, plotting, scheduling, and so forth. Um, important note is, is Lovato just doesn't just make power meters. They have a wide range of products. Any product with a communication port or a pulse can provide data back into Synergy, ranging from genset controllers, soft starters, uh, whatever is in the field. If it's got the comms port, it can be brought into the water synergy. So for a brief view, what is the synergy architecture? Um, the customer would have a home page summarizing key diagnostic information, top alarms, uh, device statuses or the devices online, offline, which I've linked back into the package. Uh, a level deeper would be individual pages um, per, per load or management process that I want to view. And then another layer would be linking to, to data for charts and reports. So the five main components of, of Synergy architecture would be obviously monitoring pages. So in this example, we've got a link to a, a power factor uh, controller, all right, um, stating where, where we're sitting, uh, energy being used, reactive power, these are dynamic objects. Each one of these widgets is linked to an electrical variable sitting inside the device, all right, allowing you to customize these pages using standard widgets, creating these links to electrical variables for an immediate real-time display of, of what is occurring uh, at field level, all right? Importantly is all those electrical variables that, that we have flagged or want to see, we can log any one of them. Almost unlimited number of data logs. Uh, logs would be defined as, as a variable, a voltage, an amp, a kilowatt, whatever the case be, and then an interval against that variable. So do I want to, to log it every minute, every 15 minutes, hour, whatever the case be, depending on how important that, that value is to you and to your reports, okay? Your, your other part would be charts. So from all these, these data logs that, that we see, um, we can go and create specific trend charts uh, against these data logs and multiple logs to display on a chart um, to do comparisons against one variable against another. So maybe uh, kilowatt consumption against temperature, as an example, that is, that is visible within the trend charting. Another very important component of any energy management system would be alarming. So based on thresholds, um, so lost alarms coming from the device or an alarm based on a data log. So based on a, a threshold, the upper lower limits of a particular variable, I can trigger a sequence of alarms, which can be emailed, uh, whatever the case be, to a user to be actioned. Okay. The data logs, which are built from electrical variables or whatever the variable was that was linked to the data log, ultimately forms part of a report. So customizing, customizing your reports is possible, uh, creating uh, pie charts or normal charts uh, for people to easily understand um, distribution of, of the energy um, coming, coming from the site, okay? 
Uh, the other option would obviously be um, sometimes your financial guy just wants a simple Excel spreadsheet export. Uh, that can be done or that can be achieved within the Synergy Pack. So what does Lovato Synergy enable? So in our example here, uh, on a custom page, I can have uh, variable lines or cost centers or departments, uh, energy consumption being displayed in real time and then presented back to a total. So going levels to production lines, users, cost centers, the area, or a type of service. I could have a combined uh, variable for uh, lighting usage versus uh, general plug usage, as an example. Um, so these, again, these pages are customizable with widgets already available and linking the correct variable to, to that page. You could have one layer deeper. Um, Example would be a manufacturing process with multiple lines. So in our graphic, we've got say similar similar applications or processes on the production line, each with each with a a meter or device that gives the, the consumption data back to us, uh, and we will display it. And you could in real time, based on thresholds, is start doing comparison. If I've got the same production lines and I've got 10 of them, why is the one exceeding the other? Um, this visible data now lets you start making decisions. Is there maybe something ineffective on that production line? You've got that first notification to actually see, I have, I have some sort of problem here. Could be a mechanical problem, uh, landing up as an electrical problem, landing up as more, more consumption for, for that, for that line, all right? More importantly, as, as data starts, starts becoming present on the system, you, you are made aware of, and what I mentioned earlier was quality or power quality. What, what is that field device seeing? Um, depending on the meter that's been uh, selected from from the Lovato range, um, you can have um, this power quality data coming through, be it, be it some simple events like high, low voltages, um, phase imbalances, to, to counting, general, to waveform capture on specific events, depending on the product's uh, data capability would obviously depend on what can be presented back to the top platform. Okay. Some examples of, of what else Lovato Synergy Pack can enable, gensets. So you have a genset on site, it's got the Lovato controller in it. You can get data back from, from that genset controller, be it fuel levels, battery levels, consumption, running time, alarms. Um, that data can be brought back to one place for, for the facility manager to see the, the health of the generator system. Uh, another example, uh, and quite a new range from the Varto, the fire pump system. Seeing the status of your fire pump uh, on site. Um, notifications, pressure settings, battery charges, getting getting information from hardware residing in some locked up room somewhere which, which no one goes to. And there might not be a need for them to go as the data is presented and go when a fault actually occurs. Uh, importantly, again, a utility like the power factor system, uh, the Lovato controllers, present the data from, from these devices to the platform, uh, understanding how many times the steps have come in. Are the steps fully operational? Am I, uh, am I achieving my target power factor, which I've set out? Is there any faults? Is there place for improvement? 
a brief view of the, the system architecture. We would have your, your, your hardware on LAN or WAN via GSM or whatever form of, of, of interface you could have. Sending the data to Synergy. Synergy is SQL based. It will collect and store the data. It has an embedded web server to public uh, to publicize data. Okay. Um, once it is publicized, clients which are web based can connect to this web server, and you'll be able to view uh, the defined user page for that particular user or general pages across users. Um, for viewing of statuses of all the different appliances on the site. Quite a, quite a busy picture we have here, um, but to give you a big brief view of, we've got monitoring and control of devices. So I could have a third party device, an energy meter, an analyzer, a soft starter, gensets, multimeters, PLCs, giving me data. Uh, in this case, it's, it's typically Modbus, RS-485. I would need to take that Modbus signal, that RS-485. I may need to convert it onto, onto an Ethernet connection or a GSM connection or via logger. And then I get presented to the Synergy pack. Um, there are two versions of Synergy. One that is hosted by Synergy in the cloud and one that you would log locally onto, onto a server which you look after on your site, okay? Ultimately, the, the end result is very similar. You will have a web client connecting to either package and seeing data and reporting information coming from these two packages, okay? Now, obviously the energy management software needs information to come from something and in our discussion today is um, the power meter so as we should all know um, what is the what is the application of a, a energy or power meter what is the purpose typically purposes would be cost allocation uh, tenant sub billing power quality analysis uh, you may have some sort of issues that, that you need to dig a little bit deeper into the electrical content of that network. Uh, demand response, load control. So based on, on data, on peaks, to set a sequence of events to control those loads. Um, seeing energy efficiency to see if there's a place to reduce. And then maintenance, um, general failures that you would pick up based on electrical data. Say, I, I know that that meter should be seeing load and is not seeing load. Uh, maybe the motor is not started or something has occurred. Quite importantly is how do I select um, a power meter for my applications? So we've got this basic single line diagram uh, going between uh, incomer to main switchboard to the internal grids um, and down to, to feeder panels. Quite often, more than not, the, the required meters can sometimes exceed what, what, is, what, is, what is needed. So you could put an overkill of a meter in the wrong place spend extra money and never actually look at that, that data. So what, what we've come to is saying on my incomer, in this case, just after the main switchboard uh, or on the MV or LV side, the generators, on these incomers is, is where I would want my, my high end meter. Uh, that meter would be able to give me some sort of bill verification, uh, power factor, efficiencies, root cause analysis, uh, power quality information, harmonics information, um, and give me some sort of more, more in-depth level of what's happening on that grid. Then on your feeders would be 
uh, generally a more mid-level sort of meter that may not need all the wonderful waveform and harmonics capturing uh, required. Uh, look, you could have a specific, um, maybe a chiller plant here, which you would want to have a, a higher uh, meter monitoring that because there might be some additional data. But in general, you know, a more medium type uh, device is sufficient. And then you'll have the, main, the, the far end panel board sitting in the middle of nowhere. Um, literally all that's connected to it might be lights, plugs, um, maybe some sort of heating system. Generally, those would not need a, a high-end sort of uh, device connected to it. Generally, those are just consumption meters with some basic information requirements. Okay. Now, just for briefing, um, a power meter obviously has, has to have something to give it this, this um, information for it to do its calculations. You can't just connect the power, you, you know, the, the load straight through, through the meters and see what's going on. So as, as, as we always would have is a, a current transformer which steps or reads the, the current in such a way so it's safe to connect to your, to your meter. Uh, typically, your CT outputs would be one or five amp, depending on your, your customer's uh, preferences. Um, and yeah, there could be quite a big range of, of CTs that could be used there. Um, just maybe a quick takeaway from this is just always making sure your directions are correct in your installations. Uh, our common faults here, um, even from veterans, is, is a swapped S1, S2 or an inverted CT. And then the feedback is that the, that the, the meter is reading incorrectly. Meters typically cannot read incorrectly. Uh, they take their data from a CT. If a CT is incorrectly installed, your data will be incorrect. From the ratio to the direction of, of, of the current flow. All right. Um, selecting a current transformer for an application um, would be would be um, understanding your, your maximum or nominal load of the primary circuit to select the ratio. So is it a thousand amp? Is it 2000 amp? Is it 600 amps? Um, the conductor, is it a cable? Is it a bar? What is the size, thickness, type of, of bar? Okay. In, more and more important, requests for or customers are not, are not aware of a split core type CT. Uh, MBS has the range from 50 to 5,000 amps. Uh, accuracy now on the split core uh, from 0.5. All right. Uh, what is the application for these split cores? Um, quite often I tell customers, you can imagine if you have 5,000 amps with a bus bar work, in a particular area, and now you need to put a, a CT on, on that. Um, yes, the split core will cost you more, but your installation time is a lot faster. You will not have downtime on the site. You don't have to re talk everything. Imagine disassembling a couple of bus bars just to get a CT in, coming with this, snap it into place, fasten it, and, and you're done. Uh, installation time. A uh, few minutes versus a couple of hours. The, the cost of the CT will, will talk, will speak for itself. They also have a small, smaller range of CTs for, for the smaller type loads. Uh, quite often, these type of requests are for customers uh, interacting to PLCs and things like that. Uh, but there is a total range of small split core CTs available. Uh, which you guys would like to ask? Obviously, we could send. You can send me the message post uh, the discussion. Arthur, at this stage, there's no uh, questions or chats coming through. But if anybody would like to ask a question, uh, please do make use of the Q and A function at the bottom of your screen, or alternatively, the chat function. 
All right. Um, so we're going to have a little break around five minutes. I'll leave you with the video. And the next session, we'll, we'll talk about the physical metering range from the water. There's a future where companies, people, and environment are a single reality, united by maximum energy efficiency. This is a job to carry out with synergy. Lovato Electric presents its solution to bring light into the darkness of energy costs, identifying them, recording them, and analyzing them. Enter the future and do it from your present. Lovato Electric presents its energy management solution based on its Synergy data system. You get real-time monitoring, data logging, and reports on your energy consumption in a more streamlined and simple way, thanks to both intranet and internet control. But how can you light up your future? Your success with Synergy is founded on a powerful SQL database, the native HTML interface, the web server, and multi-user capability, together with rapid installation and use. Complete customizable graphic interface, real-time data access, creation of multiple data loggers, representation of data in structured graphs, for analysis over time and visual reports for quick intuitive access to essential data. All this can be achieved on your own server or in a cloud solution. Energy counters, power analyzers, power factor controllers, automatic transfer switch controllers, soft starters, and many other Lovato Electric products are compatible with Synergy to offer a complete energy management solution. You now have all the tools to act efficiently and synergetically and achieve new potential in terms of energy cost reduction to obtain ISO 50001 compliance or energy efficiency performance targets. A simple, cost-effective, made-in-Italy solution from Lovato Electric Synergy, it's real and it's here now. Discover the line of energy management devices in compliance with Synergy on the Lovato Electric website. What are you waiting for? See tomorrow up close. Lovato Electric and Synergy, future-proof efficiency technology. Okay, so thank you very much for the five minute break. Uh, I think um, we've got a few seconds left and then Arthur is going to kick off again. If you do have any questions, please a reminder about the panel bar, at the your, your control bar at the bottom of your presentation. Please do direct any questions through to us and we'll answer them as, as swiftly as we could. All right. I um, hope, hope the guys topped up with some coffee for, for session two. Uh, again, um, at the end of the session, any, any QAs that, that we can answer, uh, please feel free. Um, so I will proceed on to, on to session two now. So this part will have a, a overview of the energy meters from Lovato. Uh, the power analyzers from the water and the configuration software for, for the water appliances. So 
uh, just brief, um, and it's not limited to just Lovato. Uh, you would have a energy meter or a power analyzer or power meter. What, what is the difference between these two? Uh, energy meter is used for basic billing applications. Um, the big compliance there would be the class accuracy, class one as a minimum. And then the big variable is the kilowatt hour may not be resettable. All right, quite important, uh, else, else it will not be validated. And then it's got limited electrical parameters available. So it will have your volts and amps uh, and, and, and certain things, but it might not have harmonics data. And that leads us on to a power analyzer, power meter, energy, power. So on the power analyzers, um, this is for more specific applications where more electrical data is needed, such as analysis of harmonic orders or PQ events and other power measurement variables. So a little bit more in depth to know, to know the electrical status of, of that product. Okay. Uh, another important thing as we proceed through this, you will see we talk of, of a DIN rail mount device versus a panel mount device. Uh, why did the DIN rails come along? Is pretty much customers uh, requires no voltage on the panel door. Uh, depending on, on their compliancy or what they require, uh, they may not be allowed to have any form of voltage being present at the door. So obviously a power meter um, may have voltages coming through for, for, for pickups. And in that case, if the customer has that, you would go with a DIN roll mount version of the product. Okay. All right. So I start off with Lovato's energy meters. Uh, brief reference is what we call the, the DMEs. As we can see, they, they will come in the DIN roll mount format, typically for the energy metering range, uh, ranging from single module, two four module type devices um, briefly a, a single phase type device first three phase device and we will talk through the brief electrical characteristics of these devices uh, they are available on page e1 of our catalog all right so i'll start on the single phase devices um, you would see that these single phase devices referenced are what we call direct connect meters. That meaning you do not need an external CT. That being said, there's a limit of a current that can flow through for this meter to register. Um, so if we look at this uh, single phase range on this side, a single module type device uh, up to 40 amps. All right, some of these devices will have outputs, which we will discuss the difference between just a static output, which would be a pulse, which would be picked up somewhere else, to what we call a programmable output, which is, which is quite unique, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it in the coming slides. Um, quite important for any, any energy management platform would be a communication protocol. What does that need to have? Uh, has it got nothing? Do I take a pulse and I read it on a PLC? Or have I got a 485 port and it's Modbus and I can talk to a SCADA system or a concentrator which takes my data somewhere else? Uh, MID approval, uh, which, is, which is a European standard for billing purposes. All right, that's to do with the accuracy classes. Then kilowatt hours, obviously total and partial. Partial would mean a resettable counter, like an odometer on your car. You always have the total, not resettable. And a partial would be resettable, which you could reset month to month, depending on what you need. Then the basic variables, the standard ones, uh, volts, amps, hertz, power factor, and then min, max averages of KVA. All right. So there's the 40 amp single phase. And we have a up to 63 amp single phase, all right? 
There is a unique uh, single phase unit called the DMED D130LM, and I'll cover it a little bit deeper later. Uh, quite specific to, it's the only single phase unit you can do expansions on. All right, uh, but we'll cover it a little bit later. Um, the big takeaway from this would be what's, what current rating is that single phase requirement for your site? Do you need communication ports? All right, those are the first typical questions. And then we'll go deeper into needing what sort of data is required from this meter. Similar to the single phase, there is a three phase solution. Uh, same, same discussion, except your current rating is higher. So an energy meter with up to 80 amps, three phase, direct connect, no CT, or an option with the CT. All right. Again, the, the option of having a communication protocol, the compliance, and the data quality required from the device. Okay. You will see that some of these meters have an output which is programmable, which is which is a nice unique feature of the product range. And I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit deeper. So throughout the range, you'd have a, a pulsed device or what we call a programmable device. So what can I do with that programmable output? I can link a limit, I can link a register or a variable, be it say kilowatt, to a limit. So I can say at this limit, trigger that output. And I'll explain a brief um, application for this. Okay. So when that threshold is reached, the output is triggered. When it's returned back, the output is switched off. Okay. Or very simple, you may have another device just counting pulses, and each time a a a, a weighted kilowatt hour is 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 made, it will then pulse out. Back to that single phase uh, DMED one thirty. So this kit is made of the single phase sixty three m meter and two digital inputs and two relay outputs. So I'm going to use an example of using this sort of device to do what we call a load shedding function. So for my load shedding function, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to use kilowatt as the variable. And based on that, I will have a sequence of events. So in our example, we will say, until that active power is lower than selected threshold, so we can say, we can say that limit is say five kilowatts, all right? As long as I'm not exceeding that variable of, of that limit of five kilowatts, my outputs, which I've added on, are not energized. I exceed the five kilowatts based on a set of rules, and I will trigger an output. I may energize or de-energize a output on a delay. So I could hit the five kilowatts, I exceed it for X amount of seconds, let me drop out uh, a contact, maybe a non-essential load as an example. Um, if I still continue on that same uh, trajectory, I can then trigger another output. Okay. We can further, um, we can further, uh, let's say, complicate it a little bit. Uh, the product does have inputs. So only on input being, I can use an example of, uh, say you have a generator on your site, uh, mains fails, generator comes in and your generator powers your whole site. But maybe your generator is not, uh, you want to use it more efficiently or it's, uh, you know, maybe not fully sized for the total site and you haven't got your circuit separated. What you could do is on the input, so generator comes in, power, the power's on the meter, the input is triggered. On that input, now it says, okay, now I'm on generator, 
based on a rule, now I disconnect loads. So you could maybe disconnect the air conditioning system because it may not be seen as an essential while I'm on generator. All right, so there's a couple of um, combinations or sequences you could do. Uh, and to highlight that this, this feature is quite dominant through, through the upper range of DMEDs and what we'll talk about is, is the DMGs. Um, quite a handy feature. I personally used it a few times. Um, worth, worth knowing that this does exist within the meter. Lovato have also got a, what we call a data concentrator with RS485. You may have devices in the field that already exist um, and they've just got a basic pulse output. Um, it could be a water meter, could be a gas meter, could be, could be a couple of things. And, and that could be totalized on counting of those pulses. So as long as the product is active and as long as I'm getting a pulse, which, which measure has been set, I totalize it in a register and I can send that information to the energy management system. All right, so without having to change out a whole lot of gear in the field, I can still use some old stuff, connect those pulses back to a device similar to this or this, and then take the data elsewhere. Um, important note, it is an expandable device. So in this case, uh, up to 14, 14 pulses could be done. Ethernet communication could be added on RS485 or whatever is required for the customer. We will now move to the power analyzers. Again, we had the energy meter. Now the power analyzer. This is where you'd want a little bit more in-depth electrical data from, from the product on site, um, which we will go through. Again, the range is split from an entry level device, Dunrel, to panel mount entry levels, to high end type devices. Okay. We, we have the DMG 100, 200, um, which we could consider the DMG 100 for, for more entry level type applications. Uh, it's CT type uh, connection. It does have, um, depending on the model you select, uh, you can have RS-485 built into the device and some basic harmonic analysis up to 15th order. Sometimes that is enough for, for the sites. Uh, quite often customers wouldn't even know what to do with that, but the data is, is there and it is present. Okay. We, we have then, as you can see, the screens are a little bit different. So from the economy type looking screen to a more graphic type display um, for the customer. Um, again, depending on what they prefer to look at or are they just taking the data up to a, a energy management platform, all right? Um, the top version of the DMG is what we call the DMG 300. Uh, harmonic analysis up to the 31st order. It does have Boolean logic, so a bit of if ands, if you want to call it that, and it is expandable, which I will touch on. Okay. So you could start with the basic DMG 300, well, not the basic, but uh, the upper level DMG 300, and you could expand on the device. So maybe I need more IOs, I can plug it in, up to three devices. I may want to comport Ethernet. You can add that on. Or do I need a data logger? Quite, quite a nice feature. Plugging in the data logger with, with the real time clock, you can go and say, trend this variable inside this meter. So volts, amps, kilowatts, KV, PF, at a specific interval, continuously trend. Then I can connect to this data log and I can pull that off in a spreadsheet format. Or if I've had Synergy, the management system on top, go take that data log and present it back into, into the system. Okay. Again, that demand management function, which I showed on the other DMED, is available in these two. 
quite quite a new addition, uh, the DMG 500 uh, Mini Eco Power Analyzer. Uh, great functions available from a quite a cost-effective device, uh, which has been added recently to our 2020 catalog. Um, with or without RS485. Um, it does not have a little programming port in front, but typically you would just set your, your CTs and, and off you go. All right. Um, it does have threshold uh, programming, uh, either displayed as an alarm on the unit or it would be a signal on Modbus back to your energy management system. Um, the next would be your, your DMG 600 range of devices. As you can see, it's very similar to the prior DMG 500, except it's got the infrared port and it's got options of expansion. All right, so on the 500, I cannot plug in more expansion modules or IOs. On the DMG 600 range, I can. Uh, the IO could be an input output or it could be a comms module. All right. Um, Again, you will see the classification between the different DMG ranges really works around the harmonic analysis available from product to product. And then the next one, expansion. Okay. An interesting addition now to the DMG 600 range is a set of, of calibrated uh, CTs or Rogovskis. So what is a Rogovsky? It's like a flexible coil, which, which uh, basically will open. You clip it around the bus bar and close it. All right. Uh, the meter range is then linked to a specific meter model because the calibration for accuracy was done Rogovsky with the meter. Okay. The range can go from 100 amps to 6,300 amps depending what you require, okay? Um, quite often customers are left, uh, if you can imagine a, a 6,000 amp bus bar, uh, if you have to add the CTs for that or split core CTs and, and the amount of work to fit after, uh, this does start making sense to have a, a meter, you clip into, into the hole of the old meter, Clip in the, the, the sensors and off you go. Okay. Then we move on to the, the, the mid to more high end type meters. Uh, again, our what starts changing here, our accuracy classes 2.5S uh, on the 800s to 900s, uh, the harmonic order from 60, uh, 31 to 63 calculated uh, neutral currents, logic, and expansions. So from the 700 to the 900, uh, it is able to plug in at the back for expansion modules. Those modules can be combination of communication ports or input IO modules, whatever the case be. All right. Um, quite, quite important on the DMG 900, it, it does have capability for a energy quality logger module, which you plug in the back, which is more based for your energy quality uh, events, which can be stored and then presented. All right. Um, this would be the, the units which you would look at more on your incomer side, your 600 range midway somewhere, and then the, the others for, for your field side, okay? So key takeaways for, for this, uh, for the DMGs, uh, there's a range of built-in serial ports, quite important, customers forget this, and then later the BMS or the SCADA needs, needs some data, and the customer doesn't have that port, either it's expandable or it's already present on the product, okay? That takes us into expandability on the DMGs, customization of alarm text and notification on, on the meter. Um, our counters, when, when a certain threshold is hit, count how, how long am I in that threshold limit. 
harmonic contribution visualized on the meter so you can actually see little graphs of which harmonic order is is occurring at that time uh, active power management again that was my example with uh, the thresholds and then most importantly uh, compatible with synergy and express not limited to if you have another bms system SCADA, energy management system uh, PLC, we've got Modbus, you can take information from these products. Okay. That takes me on to, to a, pa a software package, which is freely downloadable from Novato's website, uh, called Synergy Express. Um, so any, any device from Novato, which has an infrared port, or an RS-485 port can connect, or Ethernet port can connect to Synergy Express. What's quite handy with the devices from, from the water that have this infrared port, it's a simple plug-in. You don't have to get to the back of the meter or, or fiddle with Ethernet or whatever the case be. You've got your, your, your dongle, CX02 or CX01, whichever, you plug into the front, you've got your PC there, you can connect and you can use this, this configuration tool for, for multiple things, which I will go through. And it's quite safe to work with. Uh, I use this during any commissioning assistance to customers. It's quick to go through and set parameters or check for issues. Okay. So what is the main, main purpose of, of Synergy Express? First, foremost, parameter setups. Um, some products have a lot of parameters that you could set. Um, if you can imagine a synchronization gen set controller, there's a lot to set within that. Uh, doing it from the buttons page is, is, is not always practical. You can log into the device and you can, you can download these settings. Okay? You can change the parameters, you can edit the parameters, uh, you can save it if you have multiple devices and start copying and pasting the same parameters across the range. Um, imagine you had a whole lot of um, soft starters from Lovato and they're all the same and the application's all the same. You set up one, you can copy paste it across, okay? There is a real-time monitoring page, so Express creates a one-to-one -one connection and you can view statuses of, of measurement or monitoring of the device. Very handy for troubleshooting. Um, it's not always practical to to try and go through all the different little uh, screens on on a, on any meat or product. This you come in, you've got the web page, well, the simulated web page back to your PC, and you can see uh, the activities of each parameter. Then, of course, while you're busy busy commissioning that product range commands so you could be testing something on the genset controller you could set it between the different modes um, uh, you could have a power factor system and you're testing each step you could do it from here um, so very handy a real a real time trend limited to to up to eight measures so while i'm connected to to this product via express I can say, take, take voltage, take, take amps, and give me a trend. And as, as long as I'm connected via this communication, via Express, I can create the basic trend and save it to a little spreadsheet. Um, again, part of your troubleshooting mechanism can be very handy. Also, if a customer only really has just one device, maybe he's just got one meter on the main income he might not need all this wonderful software packages and he's happy he's got a meter with loggers built in a dmg and he just wants to pull that information back when he connects to it by express he's downloaded it on his pc the meters on ethernet he connects to it downloads the data and he does what he needs to do with it of course the events list or alarm list, or alarm list from the product um, also, also quite quite handy. You may be, you may get to a customer, and he says, "Ah, oh, you know, this thing was working, now it's not working. 
Meanwhile, someone went and changed some settings. You will see event changes within within this parameter. So very handy. And then if if the product has got the memory logger, which has got set, like I mentioned before, uh, active power, phase, uh, voltages set against an interval. Um, as it's logged, you could download these intervals uh, into an Excel using Express. So we, we've reached we've reached the end. Um, so the takeaway points for any energy management system and how can we help? Do you have multiple points of measurements that need profiling? Do you need to compare site consumption versus billing? Uh, do you need to reduce energy due to rising demand and consumption charges? Uh, again, you, you cannot control or change what you cannot measure. Um, quite often, customers may have all these products, but no way to visualize it. Um, so there are solutions to this. Okay. Um, that takes us on to the upcoming uh, webinars. Um, I'll let Clayton take over here. We have some time left. If there's any any questions, please feel free to to ask or, or drop or drop us a, a message. Okay, thank, thank you, Arthur. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining our webinar. Um, guys, please register for the next one that's up on the 6th of August, also at 10 a.m. Uh, for transfer switching. And then, please, if we can just have a minute of your time to just go to our polls and, and please just just go quickly into it and, and, and just go tick off for us so we can improve our overall experience on these polls. I'm going to activate it now. Guys, thank you very much. Keep well. If there's any questions, please um, feel free to drop us a message and, and we'll, we'll take it from there. Thank you. Thank you for your time.